guys, welcome back to Little Z Farm. Today I am talking all things seeds. At the end of fall, I did kind of inventory on the seeds that we have left over from the past couple of years. We have not saved seeds ourselves yet. That's something that we're going to be getting into this year, but you know, we have leftover seed packets and I, for the first time, <laughs> took actual inventory and tracked everything so that when we ordered seeds this year, we didn't over order uh, because I do have a tendency to do that. And I'm not saying we didn't have some impulse buys this year. We definitely did. Um, but I think we were a little bit more organized, a little bit, you know, more budget conscientious uh, this season. And I'm feeling pretty happy with myself. So we ended up ordering seeds from four different places this year, which is a little bit unusual for us. The first place I wanna talk about that we ordered from is Haas. I had read a lot about Haas. I've seen a lot of like seed hauls and things that people are just really happy with um, their service and the seeds that they had gotten from them. And so we ended up getting a gift card to Haas for Christmas. And that was like a seed gift card. Best thing ever. Thank you, you know who you are. And I decided that what I wanted to do with the Haas gift card is buy some things, one that I know we need, and two, some things that I wouldn't necessarily, you know, purchase from Baker's Creek or something that, you know, we uh, are just like trying out, something new. When I started doing that, you know, I just of course started adding things to the cart and very quickly that gift card was used up. I think something that I'm particularly excited about this year is trying to actually grow flowers. Um, so cut flowers have never been a thing for us. I've always been like, flowers are too hard to grow and I can barely keep my vegetables alive. That's what I've like thought historically. But now that I feel like I'm a little bit deeper into this, um, I have had some success in the garden and a bunch of continued failure. I am like ready to dive into that. And so of course, what I wanted to get were some sunflowers and I ended up getting several varieties of sunflowers from Haas, including, you know, this teddy bear sunflower, pro cut orange sunflower, and then this American giant hybrid sunflower. Now, of course, you know, to me, there's something about a sunflower, like I got the giant kind, not because I even know where I'm going to plant that, but because it is amazing. <laughs> and I think, you know, growing something like that would be a true like encouragement to me. I would just be in awe. And it would be one of those things that I could grow and I would feel like, wow, you know, I planted that and it grew and it would really encourage me to try new things. But I got some zinnias, celosia, Guys, I know nothing about flowers and you know, I'm like going through these and I'm like, oh, pretty, pretty, putting these in here. And I'm like, Celosia, what's that? No one probably knows about Celosia. Uh, okay, that's, that's, that's a very common thing. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty, so I'm gonna give it a try. Um, and I actually have kind of a new friend that I'm making here on YouTube. Um, I will link I will link them below, but I know they grow flowers and I know that I am going to be reaching out to them with flower questions because like I said, don't know what I'm doing. Also from Haas, I got marigolds. We're gonna plant those with tomatoes and cucumbers this year. So um, I wanted to have those on hand. The other thing that I was like very excited about was I got a couple different varieties of radish. I think having a bunch of radishes together those different colors um, is going to be something really nice uh, something <laughs> very like visually pleasing but also I'm like do these taste different like what's the taste difference I mean I'm always very fascinated like that other things that we got that we don't always get every year from and I got them from Haas this year is the dark red beet uh, kohlrabi and the sunburst squash We've been waiting, not waiting. <laughs> I've been looking forward to getting this sunburst squash for several years now. And it's always been one of those things we want to get. It's not, we don't put it in the plan and then we forget about it. So this year we're doing it. And then we also got all of our squash varieties here. 
from Haas. Um, and of course, I mentioned in a video previously when I made my rutabaga fries that we were growing rutabaga this year. And I got that from Haas as well. Kind of just a pretty big variety from Haas. And I'm excited to see how this goes for us. It's our first time planting seeds from them. Second place that I ordered from was Eden Brothers. And this is something that just kept popping up. Um, I think on my Facebook, like, you know, order things from here. And something that I couldn't get from Baker Creek or Haas when I tried to, um, cause I guess we were late. I feel like I was pretty early, but I guess I was late. Um, is the different types of basil, cinnamon basil and the lemon basil, uh, from Eden Brothers and Eden Brothers, <laughs> The Eden Brothers, their like saying is the seediest place on earth. And I really, really appreciated that. Honestly, that's probably why they got my order over somewhere else. Cause I could have went and purchased these basil seeds somewhere locally probably. Um, but I got borage seeds. And then the other thing that Eden Brothers had that I could not find at kind of like the mainstay place at the main places that we usually buy from. Um, and that is honey nut squash. And I read a lot about that and I want to grow it. And I was like, okay, this is worth it to try a nude seed company, a nude. Now that's seedy. A new seed company. Um, <laughs> give them a whirl. I'm going to try these seeds from them. And then I also got uh, radish sprouting seeds because we are going to attempt microgreens this year. That honey nut squash is supposed to be like sweeter than butternut squash and delicious. So I'm like, am I gonna get a honey nut squash soup out of that? I hope so. Well, the third place we ordered from was True Leaf Market. If you're not familiar with True Leaf Market, they, I mean, I know they sell a lot of seeds, but I have always seen them kind of in reference to the microgreens. And since that is something that we are starting this year, I am going to, be diving into that. I happen to get from them, unrelated, these tea filters. Because we grow a lot of mint and things like that and I dry it and I wanna have like an easy way to just kind of have these like tea bags on hand. These microgreen seeds. And we did not order a lot because we've never done microgreens before. So we got, you know, a pack of peas here. This is a one pound bag and can we just admire, I just really love their packaging. True Leaf, got the peas. Um, and then we got this, these broccoli microgreen seeds. And then this like basic salad mix, which has kohlrabi, kale, cabbage, arugula, and broccoli. And so I, these are, kind of, I, th I mean, I think these are like common microgreens to grow. Um, they're definitely, you know, the ones I've heard of and we want to try them personally. And maybe it's something that we will share at market, um, depending on the things that we create with them and if we feel confident in them, but I'm really hopeful about it. And this is something that we're actually going to be starting soon. Our first like batch of to try because I'm kind of itching to grow something right now. And this is something that we can grow under the lights and, um, you know, hopefully have, hopefully have some success. And the other thing that I impulse bought when I was ordering on True Leaf Market was Stevia or Stevia. I think it's pronounced both ways. That is like a sugar replacement. Apparently it's like very hard to grow. And this had... It has seven seeds, seven. Uh, I don't like my chances, um, but I didn't feel like it was, you know, a big enough investment to like worry about it. So if anyone has advice or has successfully grown it, I mean, um, I'm guessing I'm gonna have to grow it inside. I don't know. I, I honestly didn't read uh, much about it, but I have, you know, we're in zone 5B and uh, I really need to read up on this to like find out more, but I wanna try it. So the last seeds that I have here that we ordered is our Baker Creek seeds. 
And honestly, a lot of the stuff we got from Baker's Creek this year are like tried and true things that we already know that we love. Every year we get new things from them to try and you know, that's very exciting. But now we also kind of have our favorites. Um, so a lot of our peppers, just your standard peppers, Anaheim, poblanos, uh, jalapenos. But I got these Sugar Rush peach peppers something that wasn't like super spicy. I think they had another like peach pepper that was like very spicy and we almost ordered that on accident. <laughs> and I was like picturing these like going out and just like eating one. And so <laughs> I'm glad that we looked twice because I would have done that and I think I probably would have regretted it. Something we ordered that is new to us. We have these, you know, uh, little strawberries like the Alpine strawberries, wonderberries, and blackberries. My husband really wants to have kind of this like section kind of close to our house that is set up and fenced off for berries and um, almost like a separate garden essentially. And so we had a couple strawberry plants and blueberry plants planted. Our chickens free range, they ate them all every year. Um, they didn't grow back last year. So we're gonna actually like fence off an area and do these varieties and try them. And I'm excited about the Alpine strawberries, obviously, because I wanna be able to plant it and like harvest a strawberry in the same year because I'm impatient and I need to get over that, but I can't. A bunch of tomatoes. And I'm gonna just talk about a couple of them because honestly, we get so many tomatoes from them, I, I don't, I, I don't even know where to start, but I'm gonna pull a couple that we have loved. Um, and one of those, actually I'll talk about two real quick. Lucky Tiger and this Brad's Atomic Grape. And the Lucky Tiger tomato, the first time I tasted that, I made kind of a bruschetta and I mixed it in with some other tomatoes. It's by far my favorite tomato. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm not like inherently a tomato fan. I don't eat tomatoes like right off the plant, generally speaking, but those I could. It's just, it tastes very different to me. Um, and I don't know if anyone else feels that way, uh, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> it just does. Brad's Atomic Grape, I just think is really pretty. The Lucky Tigers are pretty too, but we always we always get those. Black cherries are very popular at market for us. I don't love them. I don't love the texture, but a lot of people do. We got a couple different types of Roma tomatoes. Another one of my favorite tomatoes to grow are the Hungarian Hearts. Um, they're like these very meaty, uh, they're bigger than Roma's, but I find them to be like flavor bold, uh, like bold in their flavor. Um, I really like to use them in a sauce. I've used them in sauces, generally speaking, but you can kind of see the internal making of them there. And they're just like a richer color and a richer flavor. Than like aroma tomato. These are new to us this year. These bumblebee tomatoes, um, always Bonnie's best, and um, some other new, a couple other new tomatoes. But this one, which I'm sure other people at Impulse bought, spoon tomato. <laughs> Weird fact about me, I love miniature things. Um, and just even looking at this picture, it excites me. I want these little mini tomatoes and we're gonna grow them in the garden, but we're also going to grow them in um, this Dollar Tree planter, like vertical planter that we're making. We got a couple watermelons, the little finger, little finger eggplants. It's pretty much the only eggplant we're successfully able to grow. Uh, black turtle beans. We grew those successfully one year and the chickens ate them. So maybe this year we will plan better and they won't. Beans, a couple different type of bee balms. I've never grown bee balm before. I've never done anything with it, but my husband was excited about it. Chamomile and lavender. 
I've never successfully grown lavender open to any tips on that. I really want to be able to grow it successfully. It's just... Um, our free seed was this uh, Paris Island Cos Lettuce. Gosh, guys, I mean, just don't listen to me pronounce things. Um, it's lettuce. And um, it says it has tender and crisp leaves with delicate white hearts. It's disease tolerant. I need that. This was something a little bit unique. Produces greens used like spinach, but has red berries on it that are like supposed to be good in fruit salads. Why not? We're gonna try it. I'm, I'm excited to grow arugula. I know a lot of people are like, you either love arugula or you hate it. I definitely love arugula. I love that flavor. And so I'm looking forward to growing it. I really like Baker Creek's like, their little facts about it, then planting instructions, and then the like seed depth and how far apart to plant and things like that. Um, this is the broccoli rapini that I wanted to try. And then we got a few other flower varieties from Baker's Creek. We got poppy, um, coxcomb, and then these black peonies because um, if I can grow that, I, I mean, I don't even know what I would do with myself. Can I grow something that pretty? I don't know. These are kind of the seeds that we got um, from the four different places. And then of course we have our whole uh, variety of seeds, a box of seeds that are in binders and in this box that have been pulled into their Ziplocs that I pulled them out of the binder to actually start setting them up downstairs. I haven't calculated our square footage yet for uh, our gardens, but it's, it's very large for us. I just started kind of laying out, you know, I do two things. New this year is my Excel sheet, um, but then I also map things out, which I don't know if you can see that. So I also map things out for the individual beds and gardens. I use this graph paper. And typically speaking, the graph paper each, you know, square represents a square foot. And then it's also tracked in our Excel sheet with the planting dates on there. So I will use the Excel sheet to be like, okay, this is what I'm planting on this day or around this day. And then I will use my written documents to kind of, these are the places I need to go to plant them, or these are the places that I need to prepare uh, to plant. And so that's what I've been working on. I'll share more about that as we get into the actual seedlings that we're planting. We haven't started anything yet. Being in zone 5B, there's nothing that we are personally starting yet. I'm excited to like report back on these seed hauls and kind of talk about, you know, what was successful and like how helpful the seed packets were, you know, how helpful the websites, things like that. Um, but overall, I'm very excited and very pleased with um, kind of the service and everything that we've gotten so far with our seeds. So, whoa, this was a lot of talking and I talked very fast. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching. If you hung around, I really appreciate it. I gotta admit, there's a lot of things I'm excited about growing, but the sunflowers are probably what's piquing my interest most. And that's just because I, I think sunflowers are stunning and I've never grown them. So tell me what you're excited to grow in the comments below and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.